Hi dear friends, welcome to the CSS Learners Academy. Today we are going to discuss the first topic on geography, which is the landform development and the factors controlling the landform development. While in that portion, the first topic that we need to study is the forces working and resulting in the formation of landforms. Well, generally we divide these forces into two types the endogenic forces and the exogenic forces. As the name suggests, the forces which are working beneath the earth crust, they are known as endogenic forces, uh, whereas the forces working from outside, they would be known as the exogenic forces. Well, you will see different type of landforms. Uh, there are mountains and then there are plateaus and then there are glaciers and rivers and plains and deserts and all that. And you may wonder how these landforms are created. There are different uh, theories defining the creation of the landforms and the uh, forces that are continuously working and creating the new landforms, whereas the old ones are depreciated. You will see that the rivers they change their course, and uh, different landforms are uh, created, and some of the old ones they are just eliminated. How all of this happens and what are the forces that uh, are responsible for these processes or these procedures. Talking about the endogenic forces, we will divide them in further three types for the ease of understanding. Number one are the folds, number second are the faults, and number third is the volcanoes. Now we will talk about the folds. When two forces act towards each other, from opposite sides, the rock layers are bent into the folds. The process by which folds are formed due to compression is known as folding. So here we have seen that there are two forces and uh, which are coming towards each other and the material which is inside, the material is pressed and it tends to uh, go upwards and then this uh, landform which is created is known as folds. There are several mountains that we see today as Himalayas and uh, Alps and Andes and Rockies. All of these are the types of folded mountains and they have been created because of the working of these forces. Now we know that earth is divided into main three types, the core, a mantle and the crust. So in the structure of earth, we know that in the, inside the core, all the rocks are melted and they are in liquid form. Whereas in mantle, they are neither liquid nor solid, but there is a continuous movement inside the mantle, beneath the crust. Now this molten matter is moving and therefore a, a lot of energy is regularly being created inside the earth's crust. Now when these forces act in different ways, we give them and we call them as endogenic forces. So in the endogenic forces, we see that different type of landforms are developed because of the working of these forces. Now we will discuss them in detail. In the endogenic forces, we need to be aware of uh, some more important terminologies. One of them is upfold and the other one is downfold. And then there is a joining line, an imaginary line, with, uh, which joins the highest points along the upfold. It is called as crest line. So the portion which is the on the upper side of the fold is known as upfold or anti sink line whereas the down portion the lower portion is known as the uh, downfold or sin sink line and the imaginary line which is thus formed and it's join it joins the upfold of the fold of the folds it is known as crest line whereas the central point from where rock strata dip away in opposing direction is called as the axis of fold. There are five types of the folds and let's discuss about these five types. Number one of them is symmetrical, number second is asymmetrical, third is overfold, fourth is recumbent and the five is overthirst. When there are two limbs of equal steepness, such type of a landform will be known as symmetrical. 
whereas if we see that the one link is less steeper than the other one we will call it as asymmetrical fold when one fold is over the other fold pushing over the other one it will be known as the overfold when two limbs are nearly parallel they will be known as the recumbent whereas if the rock strata is broken because of the forces uh, acting on them it will be called as overthrust now as we were discussing earlier the large scale folds occur they develop parallel ranges of the rounded mountains as we see in the form of the four important mountain ranges himalayas the alps andes and the rocky himalayas basically it is a word of sanskrit which means the house of snow and the areas uh, which the himalayas is located in the areas of pakistan himachal pradesh nepal kingdom of sikkim and bhutan mount everest and k2 and nanga parbat are the highest peaks whereas alps the greatest range of europe comprising the countries of austria slovenia italy switzerland germany france the highest mountain of the alps is mount blanc the next one is andes it is located in south america and the countries are argentina chile colombia peru bolivia ecuador their highest mountain is aconcagua whereas rocky is present in british columbia canada new mexico and united states highest peak is the mount albert colorado so here we understand different types of the folded mountains we will have a separate lecture on the formation of mountains where we will study the theories of how these mountains were formed but here as we are just talking about the forces which result in the creation of the folds so we study these mountains and we can quote them as an example in our papers the next thing in the endogenic forces is faults as i have said earlier about the um, the faults that the two forces when they act towards each other the uh, land form that developed is known as fault whereas the opposite direction when these forces are working in opposite direction and they are getting the material away from one another the area that form the land form which is uh, which is left over it is known as a fault so we can define a fault as fault is a fracture or break in the earth's crust sometimes these faults may uh, be created as a result of an earthquake or the formation of the force because active faults are there and they, the, the continuously forces are continuously working on them so sometimes they might result in the uh, occurrence of an earthquake now inside the rocks where the fracture is occurred it is known as fault plain when it appears on earth surface it may form a cliff or a steep slope which is called as a fault scrap another terminology is used here which is dip angle now dip angle is the angle between the fault plane and an imaginary horizontal plane there is a threshold that this is a horizontal plane and if the line if the fault or the land form is below that imaginary line it will, it will be known as the dip angle now let's talk about the categories of faults there are three categories of faults number 1 is the normal fault the reverse fault and the strike slip normal fault is a fault when it is deep downwards in the earth crust or it occurs in the rifted terraces such as mid ocean ridges african rift basin and range province of west north america whereas reverse fault is a fault which which is steeply dipping it is also known as the thrust fault and it is shallowly dipping it is a fault where the fault plane dips towards the upthrown block reverse and thrust falls shorten and thickens the crest the third one is the strike slip strike slip is a continental and it is also oceanic fault when it is in ocean it is the in the relative motion is horizontal plane is usually vertical san andreas fault of california and alpine fault of new zealand 
in pakistan we see the chaman faults it is between the indian and eurasian plate likewise we have in the karakoram form kohistan ladakh oceanic arc jhelum fault kuram fault all these are the examples of strike slip now the third thing among the endogenic forces is volcanoes as i was discussing earlier that in the second part of the earth which is known as mantle there are molten rocks which are uh, very hot and they have immense amount of energy restored and they are continuously moving beneath the earth earth crust now you will see a pattern that there are soft rocks and hard rocks anywhere in any landform if you see so when that uh, uh, magma finds a weak point or a weak rock it just bursts the rock and come out in the outer surface come above the earth surface and there it is known as lava then the lava because of the temperature the difference of the temperature inside the earth and in the above atmosphere it cools down gradually and it makes certain types of landforms and the rocks obviously now we will talk about the exogenic forces the forces which are working from outside generally we divide the exogenic forces into two two types erosion and deposition we will study in another lecture the working of the fluvial masses and the working of glacier it means that the river the glaciers and the wind these are continuously working and creating different kind of landforms we will study that in detail but here i will just give you a glimpse the two types are the erosion and the depositional landform so let's just quote an example of the river wherever the river is originating you will see that uh, that is most of the part of ice or a little uh, body of water which is moving and then when when it pass through the rocks and uh, come in the areas like we see as if, uh, an example of pakistan like we see in the northern areas the river is flowing with the utmost energy and it is making noise all over and it is continuously involved in the process of erosion the river is continuously uh, you know it is beating the rocks and making its way towards the downstream it is also it is not only working on the both uh, banks of the river but also making the surface of the river more and more deeper it is the work which we uh, called as erosion and the river is not only involved in erosion it is also involved in deposition because the material that it is gaining from the rocks that was in erosion that material is being deposited somewhere when the rivers come in the downstream uh, in the areas where there is not uh, the steeper height the speed of the rivers gets slow the energy is decreased but the mass of the river is increased uh, on the both ends you will see that the banks are far away from each other sometimes we cannot see the other bank and it is much deeper uh, as compared to the upper stream now here what the river does it deposits the sediments uh, along the, the both banks and in the depth of the river it is the work which we called as deposition so this is an example of the river such processes also include the working of air the working of the wind uh, it creates several types of uh, erosional landforms and the depositional landforms and the same goes with glacier that we will study in a separate lecture so here we have discussed forces which are responsible for different sort of uh, for the creation of different sort of landforms and how these landforms are developed and what are the forces which are responsible for these formation of these landforms we discuss the two types of uh, uh, forces the endogenic forces and the exogenic forces step by step we will proceed towards the next lecture and uh if you have not subscribed the channel i would like to say that you must subscribe to the channel so, and also you should click on the bell icon so that whenever a lecture is upload, uploaded you will be able to be notified and then you can listen and prepare your notes i am available on my mobile number i am available 
on the Facebook page. You can join our page and you can also contact me via email if you need any kind of material regarding the preparation of your notes. Thank you very much. Stay blessed. Allah Hafiz.